Hi there, my name is Belinda Dobson and welcome to the I Ching Cafe and our weekly overview for the week commencing the 18th of April 2022. Happy, happy Easter if you celebrate Easter at this time and as we think about the ceremony of Easter, the symbol of it, what is the sacrifice of the lower that you have made in lieu of the higher? What have you let go of? What are you ready to embrace? And the rebirth that's possible within you. So no matter where you come from, I wish that wonderful rebirth into your life. And if you celebrate Easter, I hope that you've had a really meaningful time with it. Right, so let's have a little recap. Last week, what did the I Ching ask us to pay attention to? Well, we had hexagram 62, attention to details. So the details matter. So last week was all about getting stuck into the fine print, into the little details, finding the little gems between the stones. And if you experience the meditation on Insight Timer, I affirm that you found something really meaningful in that journey as well. So we worked with the idea of really keeping our ear down to the ground or being really focused on what's here and now and being really in the moment. And also we had this hexagram 49 revolution. What a wonderful energy to bring in change and transformation and acceleration forward. So what in your life last week called your attention to details and to the opportunity to shed the skin of the snake and to become reborn and to accelerate into a new phase? So if you have anything you'd like to share, please do pop it in the comments. It'll be really lovely. Okay, so let's have a look at this week. What is the I Ching asking us to focus on? The word focus is really important because we do struggle with everyday life to focus on one thing and really pay attention to what's really important at any point in time. So when I ask these questions, I cast the coins for the same question every single time. What should we focus on? And the I Ching tells us, right, this is a focus point. In your own life, there will be other things that call your attention and just know that pay attention to your intuition and trust your life. Okay, so this week we have our first hexagram is hexagram 25, innocence, the unexpected or disentangling. If you remember, we had our March overview was this hexagram, right, all about disentangling from the ties that bind us, getting unstuck from the complexities and all the illusions, delusions and mental and emotional entanglements that we get into. And perhaps we've carried with us for decades and perhaps through your family line too. So this week, our attention is being brought back to that hexagram, back to that energy that's really wanting us to work with it and unpack it. And so the example of that hexagram is this idea of getting tangled up in a ball of string. And what happens is we get so tangled up in our own complexities that when it comes time to take action, to seize the moment when the opportunity presents itself, we are entangled and we aren't able to escape that entanglement. Remember that entanglements are not necessarily restrictions put on us by other people. Very often the entanglements are self-created. They are our mental and emotional patterns, our you know, inner voice that says, I will never do, okay? I will never do that. I will never be that person. And what that does becomes like a curse. You curse ourselves because that thought becomes very strong. That feeling becomes very strong and we get locked into that emotion years after the emotion was perhaps relevant and useful to us. Okay, so this week, there's something around getting unstuck, okay, and getting free of the obstacle that is drawing our attention, calling us to pay attention to it. You might find that this entanglement is an internal process, mental, emotional, spiritual, or it might be an obstacle you face that you just don't know how to remove. And I would encourage all of us this week is to take responsibility for some internal world distortion, as it were, that we could think about. And what I mean by that is take the thing that's facing you at this time, that is the obstacle, and sit with it and say, what might be my distorted view or my attachments to things being in a particular way or my expectations? or my understanding 
or my attachment to outcomes? What is my role in holding on to something of the past that is now actually caused this obstacle? Because often we see the obstacle as external. It's the way that we can process it, but the reality is actually the internal creates the external. So let us take responsibility for our emotions and our thoughts this week. Let's sit with the thing that is frustrating us at this time and let us unravel and visualize just letting go all those ropes that have tied around us and have held us in place. Let's visualize taking responsibility for letting those things go. They are self-created. And I know that it when we are stuck and we're kind of in a position where we feel we can't move, we do want to see the responsibility lying elsewhere, outside of ourselves. We have to take responsibility. Put down the complexity. Why does it have to be so complicated? What is the emotional mental pattern that's running around your head? Is that true? Or is that an old way of looking at the world? What do other people think? So work with this idea of disentangling from the complexity and from the rope, the string, the entanglement. Let us let it go. Let's disentangle this week and free ourselves up from an old thing. So we have one changing line this week in the third position. So when we had our monthly, we did have this exact same changing line. So maybe there's an element here for all of us that we aren't yet quite done with this changing line that it's come back. And this is changing line three, and this is all about, you remember from the monthly, <laughs> the cattle being taken, the horse being taken from outside the saloon, our horse, and someone disappearing off into the dust, into the sunset with our stuff, okay? And so there's a sense of loss. Something unexpected has been taken from us. And so we face a choice point. So this unexpected loss does not necessarily have to be stuff stolen or lost or like, big issues. Maybe it is, but it's just something that has been taken out of your life, taken out of your flow. And you have a choice. You can stay where you are and hold on to the way things were, okay, which in the changing line refers to staying in the capital, staying where you are, what you know. Or you can move with the moving people, which is to choose to move to a new place. And blessings come if you make the choice to move, okay. And that means that we have the opportunity to make a choice to let something go and move on. Very difficult to do when we're grieving something that we've lost. And I'm not going to put tones over it for you. Obviously, I don't know for you what level of what does loss mean. And I affirm that it's a simple thing that creates the awareness on a much bigger issue. Work with it. Work with this idea that where you feel the loss, where you feel something has shifted, or something that was the way it was before and is now changed, wherever you feel like something has been taken from you, it's just sit with it and say, my choice point is here. I could stay in a state of grieving over what I've lost, stay in the capital, or I could move. And in moving, I'm moving with the change, and I'm taking the opportunity of this event that has triggered me, I'm letting it guide me into a new place. Okay, can you do that? Can you let go of needing to really hold on to the thing that's been lost? Because it's never going to come back that way. The only way it's going to come back is if you move forward. So our second hexagram is hexagram 13, fellowship. So with this one changing line, what that means is that in this week, we're working with two flows of change, this 25, innocence, disentangling, and we are also working with this idea of fellowship, working and collaborating with others to achieve something. So this week, the opportunity to collaborate or to get everybody around you to focus on a collaborative aspect is really important. That is what we're being asked to pay attention to. And I would say that perhaps for you, this week it becomes clear, what is the thing that's been removed off your dashboard? Okay, what is the loss? What is the disentanglement that is becoming apparent to you? Because the disentanglement might also be disentanglement that you are now aware of. Something has shifted and you now let go of something. And not necessarily the disentanglement happens now, but that you become aware of its focus and attention, right? So the disentanglement comes and as a result of that, the space is created to work in fellowship. 
to bind people around something that's really important and unifying and rallying and to create an opportunity to focus everyone on shared goals. This hexagram is all about harmony and working together and collaboration and just finding a place where everyone can bring their best contribution into the pot, put it in, work together and celebrate the rewards of that effort. Very similar, as I've spoken before, of the Fellowship of the Ring <laughs> from Lord of the Rings, where all this raggle-taggle collection of crowd works together to achieve something really significant and important. And everybody has got a contribution to make. So what is your contribution? Are you joining in the fellowship or are you rallying other people to work together to focus on what's really important? As we work with this week, I'd like to leave you with another image. You know, we talk about an onion and the layers of the onion. And as we peel the layers away, we get closer and closer to understanding something. The same thing with a beautiful rose or a flower, you know, the real gem in the middle sits inside the petals. We peel away the layers. And I want you to sit and think about this week, this idea of peeling away the layers as being this disentangling. This beautiful flower is really a symbol of innocence. And so let us work with just opening up and removing the husk, removing the outside leaves, the things that are no longer there, refreshing the flower and getting closer to what's really important, to the simplicity and the beauty of the scent of the rose. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me this week for this week's episode. I wish you beautiful disentanglement and freedom that comes from letting go of the old, seeing the opportunity to move, not seeing the loss and getting caught up and attached emotionally or mentally to that, moving forward, understanding your loss in a new way, moving forward, and seeking out the fellowship that can bind and work with you to achieve your mutual goals. Wonderful. If you have not yet done so, go and check out the monthly episode where we focus on the locked hexagram of hexagram 16 enthusiasm. We are building up the battery of energy and power this month in April. So how are you doing with that? Please like, share and subscribe. It would be great to have you join me on the regular and of course, I'll also see you on the socials and see you back here very soon.